Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be installing one of my favorite apps, which is called Apache Guacamole manually on our Pi hosted series. So let's get started. Now, Guacamole is a remote desktop clientless client made for HTML5 which means any browser on your computer, tablet, phone, anything that basically has a browser could use Guacamole and reach any remote desktop, whether it's RDP or VNC. And you could also do Telnet and SSH, which also means that you don't have to install a client onto your device. This is particularly useful for me because I have a lot of devices that I remote into. And this basically stores all the connections for me so I don't have to remember what port I'm supposed to be connecting on and what IP address. This software has been able to get me out of a lot of sticky situations that uh, saved me a lot of time on doing something. So yes, I really do use this application a lot. Now we're also gonna be installing this manually, which means we're gonna be going to the Docker Hub website looking at the configurations and manually installing it into Portainer so I can show you guys how to read the packages from Docker Hub and manually install it into your setup. So this way you don't have to rely on app templates. Now at the end of this video I'm also going to be talking about the roadmap of this series. Basically where I started, where I'm heading to, this way you guys have an idea of where this series is going to go. But before that let's jump into it. First thing we need to do is pop over to our browser. I'm gonna open a second browser because we're gonna need two. On the left side, I'm gonna pull up Docker Hub. Now, you could always just Google it like I did or go to hub.docker.com, jump into here, and you don't have to register. If you do, you could download and ship and build whatever applications you want or server content, contents. But for me, I'm just gonna search for what I need. Now we're gonna looking for guacamole. So guacamole, guacamole, guacamole. I don't know, I'm, I might be saying it wrong. Now, here you're gonna get a list of all install types of the Guacamole uh, service. The first one obviously is, I guess, the official one, and then you have a few more underneath. Now, I am particularly interested in this one, which is like three or four down, because it supports x86, I mean x64, and ARM. Now, I'm gonna click on here, and we're gonna see exactly what's going on. It gives you all the little information, Docker, the uh, preview of it, the usage, how you would install it onto a Raspberry Pi, the parameters, and all the extensions that you need. So if you need LDAP or two-factor authentication to log in, you could add those uh, extensions in here. But I'm gonna show you guys how to translate basically this stuff into Portainer. Also, uh, I wanted you to keep in note that there is this tags. Tags is interesting because you need to know what you are using. So they have like older versions, they have latest, they have ARM32, V5, um, hard float, and master. What we're gonna be using is the hard float version. If you are running on something else, you might wanna look it up to see if they have ARM64 or something. But let's just come back into overview and start finishing this up. Now, I'm gonna pop over to my portainer now. I don't even know why I was spelling that. And let's log in. Uh, don't save. So here is our portainer, and I only have two containers, which is Homer and portainer itself. So you could take a look at that, Homer and portainer. Now, if I was to go into app templates, if I was to search for guacamole, it should be here. And I'm not gonna go through the installation, even though it's ex almost exactly the same. Like you click on here, and you're pretty much ready to go, you see? guacamole I click on here and I could basically deploy this but the way I want to show you is the manual way like I said so if there is an application that is not on the app template you could still install it without having to worry now first thing I'm gonna do is hit add container and I'm gonna call this guacamole and in the image you see how it says my image colon my tag that's where you would put the ARM hard flow. So if you're looking for any particular server software and you need that particular version, that's where the tags go in. In our case, we are gonna be using OZNU, which I could just copy from up here, you see that? OZNU slash guacamole colon, which is the tag, ARM hard float. That's the version that we want. Going down, we will always need to manually publish ports. They use 8080, is 8080? Oh my God, it's so hard to see. Yeah, it's 8080. So you see how they use port right over here, 8080? 
8080 is such a common port that I try to avoid using 8080. So in my case, what I'm going to be doing is 9100 to 8080. So this is your host. This is the one that you would connect to. And it points to the container itself, which is the 8080 for the container. That's how they have it set up. Moving down, if there are commands, sometimes you would see it uh, do like dash, dash, port, whatever. If you see a command, this is where you would put the command. Otherwise, you could just leave all this alone. Now we're gonna move over to volumes. Now you see how it says V for volume? That is what you need to do for volume. So we're gonna add a map additional and we're gonna do slash config because that's where this is at, you see? The right side, it says slash config. That's what we need to put here in the container. And then path to config. In our case, we are gonna do a bind and we're gonna bind it to our host. So we're gonna do bind port tainer port tainer slash now I have a problem remembering exactly where this is supposed to go because port tainer has their own little folder when you create the app templates so I'm just gonna pull up I open a new tab and pull up Homer scroll down a little bit on Homer and you could see that's the volume that I want I'm just gonna copy this and paste it over to here and instead of calling it Homer, I'm just going to call this guacamole. All right, so our volume is set up. Network wise, there's nothing we need to do here. Sometimes if you're using like a torrent device or something that requires a DNS, you would put the DNS here like 1.1.1. Environment variables, this is a little bit easier. We don't have to do this. In most cases, there's a lot of other server software that requires you to uh, run environment variables. If you wanted to run, say, these extensions, uh, LDAP or Duo or OpenID, then you will need to run an extension, uh, an environment variable. So this is what the dash E stands for. So in our case, if I was to do, say, run envir environmental variable, it says I need extensions. So I would type this in as extensions. And then over here, I would add whatever module that's down here. If I wanted to uh, add LDAP or Duo or OpenID, I would add that information here. But in my case, I'm just gonna leave it blank and we could keep moving on. Now, labels, we don't really deal with labels. It's just changing how the software names certain things. So we'll usually leave this empty. Restart policy, I would like to usually change to unless stopped. You know, unless I manually stop it, it's going to keep restarting if the server fails or something like that. So I know it's going to come back on. And then you have runtime process. Uh, this, you have a privilege mode and you could add some devices. So if you are doing anything with VPNs or something that requires the physical hardware of your device, you would add the device here, give it privilege mode and type in whatever you need here. Uh, we, I will be showing you that a little bit later, later on a future episode because we will have to do this in the future. And that is about it. Now, if this was, like I said, a network device, we would probably have to enable some options here as well. But for now, we are all set. All we have to do is just deploy the container. It's gonna download everything here and we should be good. Now, it might take two to five minutes, maybe more sometimes depending on the image size. But ultimately when this is done, the deployment progress, It'll just jump back into the container and we are all set. So while we're waiting for that, we could always take a look at other stuff. So if I was to download transmission, okay? Transmission is a torrent server or torrent. Um, in a future episode, I will be running something like this, which is probably this one because we want to use OpenVPN. So let's take a look at the quick configs on this. And you could see how they have dash E, which we need environmental variables for this. Uh, volume, which is for the data. And these are actual commands. So commands that you would go into the command logging and that's where you would put this stuff. And then we have the port information. So now if you're looking at this just through this command itself, it doesn't look as intimidating anymore because you know where all this is supposed to stand and where it's supposed to go. Using that same configuration like Docker Compose, you could just copy and paste the Docker Compose and get that working as well. But Ultimately, it's not that hard. And if I was to go into tags, I gotta make sure if this would support, look, it supports ARM. So we are good to go to install transmission open VPN on our Raspberry Pi Pi hosted server, which again, 
this will be coming later. Now, everything is done and installed. I am gonna make this big. And, oh, something that I did learn from one of my comments, which I did not know. So, I used Docker Compose before. I used Docker regular. Portainer is pretty new to me. I use it, but I'm not like super familiar with it like some of the guys who use it all the time. So one of the things you could do is normally when you click on this link, it should open the new, um, like open a new tab and bring you to that new link. Um, mine didn't do that because it would just go to 0.0.0.0. .0 to fix that, you would go over to endpoint, then click over to your local, and then you have a public IP. Change this to the actual IP of the Raspberry Pi. And then anytime that you click on your container, it will automatically work. So right now I'm gonna go check because it's not loading yet. I'm gonna go check the logs to see if there's any errors that were happening. And I think this takes a little bit longer to deploy, but I'm gonna let this go for a little bit and it should jump up soon, I hope. Okay, it has worked. It did take another good four to five minutes for the Java and everything to work itself in, but now it's booted up. Now, if you're, this is the first time you're booting into Guacamole, uh, you're gonna need to use the admin name, which is guac admin, and the password is guac admin. Now, I do recommend changing that. And there we have it. This is our little desktop. It doesn't look much right now. And honestly, I don't know if I ever could theme this. I don't think I ever have tried, but in here, this is where you start going into settings and start adding all your stuff. Now, the active session is important and I'll explain that a little bit later, but we're gonna move on to history, which is what connections were done. Users, you can have multiple users log into this and get access to all your remote connections. So you might wanna change the password for the Guac admin, at least for now, or add a new user. Uh, groups, you would have to connect this to the connections itself. So you could actually just, don't worry about groups yet, just jump right over to connections. And if you wanna add a new group, um, you can. The groups is just helps you define where it stu where stuff belongs. Like if I work for my home server, I would do home server. If I'm I have, I have connections to my parents' place, I would do parents' home or something like that. So you could add new groups there. But that's this is where you would add all the connections. And then in preferences, again, this is where you would change all your stuff. Now, because I use this on my phone sometimes, I like to use this option, which is drag to move the mouse pointer and tap to click. This is so much more convenient than just tapping to click on where you want to be on the screen. Uh, it's just harder on a phone where your finger just like presses like four buttons at the same time. Otherwise, um, I would just leave all this as default and head over to connections. Now I'm gonna do a new connection and I have a server that I run my Space Engineers server on, so I'm gonna jump into that. So the name of this, I'm just gonna do win10 server. No protocol is RDP. And you can see, you can do RDP, SSH, Telnet, and VNC. And funny history about Guacamole is that this started off as a Telnet uh, remote client. And then it started branching off to other stuff, which is SSH, RDP, and VNC, and stuff like that. So it actually originally started off as just for Telnet. Now I'm gonna switch this to uh, RDP because it's Windows. Maximum connection, you could set this up. Right now it's gonna be unlimited if you don't set anything. Uh, connection weight, you could load balance it. Um, if you have too much connection going onto this screen, you could, you know, you could just load balance the connections. I'm gonna leave that alone as well. Uh, this you don't have to worry about unless you have a guacamole proxy, which is you're jumping from another connection to another connection. You don't need to worry about this. Other here is where you need to start adding your information. So the host name is uh, 159, I remember that IP. And remote desktop is usually 3389. Uh, you got your username here, and then you could do your passwords, which is here. And then your domain, if you got a domain like work group or something, you, this is where you would put it. And as far as security modes, I would usually do any and kind of just leave this the rest of the way. I don't really need to set this unless I want to set my own display. Uh, I could disable clipboard. You could also redirect audio and all the other stuff. And for, for, for performance, you could leave, maybe enable wallpaper and stuff like that. And basically that is about it. You got even wake on land options, SFTP if you wanted to. I'm gonna save this connection. And now I have my own little new connection. Now if I head over to back to home, you're gonna see one new connection. And if I was to double click on that, 
All right, there we have it. And we are connected to our Windows 10 server through HTML5 through Guacamole. Now, I gotta say, um, right now it's running a little bit slower than usual, but Guacamole is not as fast as native. It is gonna be a little bit slow, but it's functional. That's what I'm more concerned about. Now I'm able to, you see, if I highlight, it's basically like if I'm there, but if I was to right click, I get my little menus up, uh, I could click on my file. It does take a second to load. You see, it's not like fast, but it works. It's not like native speeds, but I'm able to get to my remote con connections right through HTML5. Now, the other thing I was talking to you about earlier was if I was to back out of this, you see how this is still, this is still running technically. It's still got an active connection on here and it's not gonna disconnect unless the Windows 10 server tells you 15 minutes timeout, I'm gonna kick you off or you log off yourself. Um, the other way is to go over to settings and active connections and this is where you would kill the session. And if you kill the session, it's gonna disconnect from uh, the server itself, but that's how you would do it. Over here also shows you if you got more than one user, you could see how many active connections you have. And this is where you could see who's on it, what's being worked on, who's using your stuff. Otherwise, again, this is one of my favorite applications because I could save all my connections, like all 50, 60 connections that I have. I'm not that many, I'm exaggerating. It's more like 20, but I'm not gonna remember all my IPs to it. And I could reach it from my desktop or any computer that has a browser that supports it. Also, don't forget to update your Homer because once this is all set, you can see, you can start adding your little applications and start filling this server up with all your stuff that you're gonna be adding. So right here, I have my little guacamole and that is it. Anyway, uh, once I start publishing more devices onto the Homer dashboard, I will be con uh, publishing my uh, Homer config file over to my GitHub. This way you don't have to redo all the work that I did and I'll have all the icons and all that stuff up on there as well. So it's going to make it a little bit easier for you guys if you are to planning to continue to use Homer. Now there was a couple of questions on my previous videos and I'm going to try to answer them now. Um, you guys asked why do I not use Docker Compose? I figured uh, I do use Docker Compose generally myself because it's simple and it's more uh, command line driven. Now, I figured that because I have Docker and I have Portainer, Portainer does pretty much the same thing that Compose would do, but just in a GUI fashion. So I decided to stick with Portainer and not install uh, Compose instead or use Compose instead. And this way I could also explain how to use the command lines in Docker. This way, in the future, if you get stuck, you could always learn how to uh, type up the commands and figure it out. Uh, another question is, uh, why didn't I use 64-bit of ARM versus 32 that I'm using right now? Uh, initially, I was just planning to do this with just Raspberry Pi OS image, which is 32-bit. Uh, if it does get to the point where I do run into a struggle or something that I need cannot be installed because it only has 64-bit, I might considering switching over. But for now, I'm going to try to hit the limits of where hard float would be or 32-bit would be. And where, the, where I kind of get stuck on why I should install 64-bit versus keeping it on 32. So that might come in the future where I will convert it to 64, I don't know. Depends on where I get stuck on. But for now, I'm gonna keep it on 32-bit. And a uh, question from my last video, which is um, Homer. Uh, why am I using Homer instead of Heimdall? That's because I saw it on the Twitter post, I mean the Reddit post, and I decided to stick with Homer. That's just about it. Now, as far as the roadmap goes on this future of this series, uh, so I haven't planned out where so our first episode, we created the base, we installed the base and uh, the Docker software and Portainer. The next uh, video we did was a quick little video on installing this dashboard that you see. So everything that we start adding to server, we have a placeholder for. Now we're starting to add applications like guacamole and uh, I'm gonna start moving applications. So the next episode, I'm gonna start doing downloaders. I'm gonna be using Torrent, uh, JDownloader and uh, file managers and stuff like that. And then afterwards on that, I would probably go back into the shell and not necessarily install something for Docker, but turn our little Raspberry Pi into a network share. So we could grab all the files that we downloaded. And then afterwards, I'm probably gonna do some media um, expansions, which is using Plex or Jellyfin and moving towards that. So once I install a lot of the base files, like the server base, uh, then I could start installing stuff that will complement the server bases. Like I might be installing Grafana just to see all the system stats, how much hard drive am I using, how, how much CPU usage am I using on the Raspberry Pi and Plex information using Grafana. Then on top of that, I would install other applications to help the downloaders download or I don't know. So 
from now until trying to get all the base software installed, which is downloaders, media installers, and um, server appliances, then I'm gonna start adding the complementary stuff like notepad and uh, recipe managers or whatever it is. Then I'll start adding those on. That's kind of where the roadmap's going for this series. I'm gonna install a lot of the heavy loaded applications now, install a lot of complementary applications later, and also work around getting some network file sharing and stuff like that into this whole system. Again, if you guys have any specific applications that you want to see on this server series, let me know down in the comments below. Uh, don't go crazy with like Untangled. I did see that comment. Uh, Untangled is like a, almost a full operating system. It's not gonna install in a Docker or work the way you want it to, but I don't know, something's, uh, similar to what I'm doing, like uh, um, transmission for torrenting or J downloader or something like that. Anyway, that is it for me, guys. If you guys have any questions about the series that we just did right now, let me know down in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.